Okay, so the next question that we have here is question number 14. And that is basically, um, if a rock is thrown upward, so let me write the question down and I'll be back with the rest of the question. Okay, so the question is, if a rock is thrown upward on the planet Mars with a velocity of 10 meters per second, its height in meters after t seconds is given by h is equal to 10 times t minus 1.86 times t squared. Part A of this question, you want to find the velocity of the rock after one second. And part B is find the velocity of the rock when t is equal to a. Part C is when, when will the rock hit the surface? And part D is with what velocity will the rock hit the surface, right? So you can answer all of these questions using a simple graph, meaning that you don't have to do much calculation. So I will show you this on a graph first, and then later on we will also calculate basically uh, the different parts of this question, meaning that f of x, I call it basically 10 times, 10 times x minus 1.86 times 1.86 times t times x squared. 10 times x minus 1.86 times t squared is the same as this function. Now you can see that, now if I differentiate this function, you can see that the that f prime of x is basically is this this function over here the value of the value of this function at any point is going to is essentially what since essentially this is the velocity since, since this is the derivative of the of the original function so that 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 just simply means that basically the, by definition essentially the derivative is the instantaneous rate of change of the of the original function right which means that basically that the 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 value of this of this purple function at every point is the instantaneous rate of change of the original function meaning that for example uh, and the instantaneous rate of change of the original function is nothing but the but the slope of the line tangent to the graph of the function at that point, right? Meaning that, for example, at this point over here, if I draw a line tangent to the graph of the function, call it y is equal to m times x, for example, right? And do a slider for m. You can see that basically if I set the value of m to 10, if I set the value of m to 10, that's exactly the, um, basically, the line essentially becomes the tangent to the graph of the function at this point, which means that the derivative of this, of the, of the original function at, at the point x is equal to 0 is equal to 10, right? And, and you can see that the value of the, of the, of the derivative function happens to be a 10 at, at this, at the exact same point. Moreover, basically, what happens is that, for example, um, what happens is that, for example, at this point, t, t x is equal to 2.688, the function essentially uh, is at a, as, at a maximum. At the maximum, basically, you can draw a line tangent to the graph of the function in this manner. You could say that x essentially y minus uh, y1 which is 2.13.4441 or let me just write an, a general equation for this function so I'm, I'm going to write it as um, I'm going to write it as y minus y1 which I'm going to call for example f of a is equal to m times for example x minus a right and do some slider for a and then I'm going to change the value of a so that it becomes 
right 2.688 which is which is this this value over here right now call it 2.688 exactly over here and then if i change the value of m over here let's forget about this this line and this is essentially the same m that we have used over here so if i change the value of m to exactly to exactly zero you can see that the line becomes tangent to the graph of the function at this point meaning that the that the that the value of the derivative of this function at this point must be equal to zero right now at the same at the exact same point you can see that the value of the derivative function is again equal to zero right so that means that simply means that um that simply means that basically this is my original function and this is my derivative function right and so the derivative function is is giving me the is essentially giving me the the instantaneous rate of change of the of the original function at every point in the domain of the function right now how you can use this is that for example you want to know what is the velocity at of the rock essentially after one second for example meaning that at, at x is equal to one which is some point over here for example at x is equal to one uh, is this point over here the output of the function becomes 8.14 which means that the, the height of the rock is 8.14 meters after one second and the and basically at x is equal to one you can see that you can see that the output of this function is 6.28 which means that the 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 value of the derivative function is 6.28 which means that the instantaneous rate of change of the of the original function is 6.28 meters per second right which is the velocity right so you you can you can call this basically the the velocity of the rock after one second you can call it basically give or take 6.28 meters per second for example the velocity at, of the rock when t is equal to a uh, you can still uh, basically find this based on essentially based on this based on the graph of this function meaning that you could you could say that basically that you, if you essentially find some way in order to find the equation of this of this straight line that would be basically the the answer over here which is the velocity of the rock at t is equal to a right we will we will talk about that as we go along and then the third part of this question is when will the rock hit the surface the rock hits the surface when when essentially when um, when the when the height essentially goes to zero and the height essentially is zero at t is equal to zero and then it goes to 13.441 meters and then again it goes back towards the ground at 5.376 uh, seconds the height essentially again goes back to zero which means that after 5.376 seconds after basically at 5.376 seconds the height essentially goes back to the goes back to zero which means that the rock essentially hits the surface and with with what velocity will the rock hit the surface again you want to know uh, the essentially the, the 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 velocity of the rock when t is equal to 5.376 seconds when the at at when x is equal to 5.376 seconds exactly at this point the output of this function is negative 9.999 that's the velocity of the of the rock when it hits the surface negative 9.999 or take it as negative 10 for example approximately negative 10 basically meters per second right so based on a graph you can basically figure out all of these things right now let's go back to the problem and 
solve the problem the usual way i mean the the, the way that we are actually supposed to solve the problem this was the uh, essentially the shortcut way um so you want to first you want to find the velocity of the rock after one second right which means that essentially you need to find the derivative of the function at t is equal to one essentially but then the second part of the question wants you to find the velocity of the rock when t is equal to a so if you find the velocity at t is equal to a then basically then you can once you have calculated this you can set the value of a is equal to one and then and then based on that you will be able to calculate essentially this value in part a as well which means that basically i'm going to say that basically for example h of t is equal to for example 10 times t minus 1.86 times t squared and i want to calculate the the essentially the derivative of this function which is h prime of h prime of t right and i want to calculate it at at at, at the point a so that becomes h prime of a essentially right so h prime of, of a since i know that basically that f prime of a is the same thing as the limit of f of a plus h minus f of a over h as h approaches zero i can write this as basically as the limit of basically h of um, a plus h lowercase h minus uh, basically h of a minus h of a over basically h as h approaches zero right and then you need to calculate this meaning that you know that basically um you need to calculate h of h of a plus h which would be basically h of a plus h would be the same thing as basically 10 times 10 times a plus h minus 1.86 times a plus h all squared right based on this based on this 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 um, relationship which would be the same thing as 10 times a plus 10 times h uh, minus basically 1.86 times basically a squared plus 2 times a h plus um, h squared right which would be the same thing as 10 times a plus 10 times h minus 1.86 times a squared uh, 1.86 times 2 is the same thing as 12 1 16 17 1 and 3.72 so that's negative 3.72 times a h minus 1.86 times h squared right um this is a this is h this is a squared this is a times h and this is h squared so that you cannot simplify this any further and and then basically you also need to calculate h of a right so h of a is the same thing as based on this that would be 10 times a minus 1.86 times a squared right so then you can you can substitute these in this relationship you can say that h prime of a is the same thing as the limit of basically h of a plus h which is this value over here which is 10 times a plus 10 times h minus 1.86 times a squared minus 3.72 times a h minus 1.86 times h squared minus this whole thing so that's negative 10 times a plus 1.86 times a squared over h as h approaches zero so then these two you can cancel out these two you can cancel out so this becomes the limit of basically 10 times h uh, 
minus 3.72 times a h minus 1.86 uh, times h squared over h as h approaches zero right next what you can do is that you can write this as the limit of and then in the numerator take an h out h times 10 minus 3.72 times a minus 1.86 times h over h as h approaches zero and then cancel these two out so as h approaches zero this becomes basically 10 minus 3.72 times a so this tells us that basically m uh, or essentially f prime of or h prime of a h prime of a is the same thing as 10 minus 3.72 times a right now what we wanted to calculate here was the was the velocity of the rock after one second right so then i can i can set the value of i can set the value of a as one essentially meaning that h prime of so over here i can say that the velocity the velocity of the rock after one second would be the same thing as h prime of one h prime of one which would be the same thing as 10 minus 3.72 times one which is 3.72 and 10 minus 3.72 is the same thing as basically zero 10 9 and 9 and 10 this is an 8, this is a 2, and this is a 6, 6.28, 6.28 meters per second, which is the exact value that we have calculated, that we have calculated over here, 6.28 meters per second, right? Now, what you want to calculate next is when will the rock hit the surface at essentially we want to know when 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 the rock will hit the surface so that the rock will hit the surface so the rock essentially will hit the hit the surface when the height becomes zero and the height becomes zero that is to say that h of uh, basically t is equal to zero now h of t is the same thing as and we know that h of t is the same thing as basically 10 times 10 times t minus 1.86 times t squared right so now if if you set h of t is equal to zero that means that 10 times t minus 1.86 times t squared is equal to zero right so if i if i basically if i t take a t out here i have t times 10 minus 1.86 times t is equal to zero that means that either t is equal to 0 or 10 minus 1.86 times t is equal to 0. So t is equal to 0 is of course correct. And that is essentially this point over here. When essentially when you, when at the, when, when at t is equal to 0, the rock is at the surface of the, of the, of the planet essentially, right? So, uh, so then so then this is not what we are looking for we are looking for this so that's negative 1.86 times t is equal to negative 10 which means that which means that 1.86 times t is equal to 10 which means that t is equal to 10 over basically 1.86 uh, in seconds and 10 over 1.86 is the same thing as uh, 
10 over 1.86 is the same thing as 5.376. 5. 5.376 seconds which is exactly the value which is exactly give or take the value that we got over here right now you want to know essentially with what velocity will the rock hit the surface right with what velocity will the rock hit the surface and to calculate that so with you you want to know with what velocity will the rock the rock hit the surface what this means is that when the rock hit the surface essentially what that means is that when the rock hits the surface what is the velocity and the rock essentially hits the surface at at 5.376 seconds which is which means that you can rephrase this question as at t is equal to 5.376 seconds what is the velocity Now, we know essentially over here that we can calculate the velocity using this function that we found over here as h prime of a is equal to 10 minus 3.72 times a. h prime of a is equal to 10 minus 3.72 times a. Now, set a is equal to 5.376 and we have basically the h of 5.376 is the same thing as 10 minus 3.72 times basically 5.376 which is supposed to be a very large negative value not a very large negative but a negative value which is to say that basically this is 10 minus 3.72 times 5.376 negative 9.99872 right so this is negative negative 9.99872 and this is a velocity so that's meters per second which is exactly the value that we got negative 10 meters per second right so this type of question you can of course take a look at the graph and uh, and basically and solve the problem that way or you can do essentially calculation this way and solve the problem in any case essentially of course you will you will come up with the with the exact same solution Okay, so the next question is the displacement in meters of a particle moving in a straight line is given by the equation of motion S is equal to 1 over T squared, where T is measured in seconds, right? Find the velocity of the particle at times T is equal to A, T is equal to 1, T is equal to 2, and T is equal to 3 seconds, essentially, right? So... Basically, you know that the essentially that 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 velocity is the is the instant is the rate of change of position with respect to time. You know that velocity, by definition, is is the rate of rate of change of position position with respect to time right now the rate of change of position with respect to time would be the rate of change of this function right which means that essentially you need to find the derivative of this function to find essentially the velocity so since i want to find the velocity as 
at t is equal to 1, t is equal to 2, and t is equal to 3, also t is equal to a, I'm going to find the, 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 the velocity at t is equal to a, and then later on we can set a is equal to 1, a is equal to 2, a is equal to 3 to find the, to find the velocity, right? But before essentially we, we do essentially all of that, what we can do is that we can we can calculate basically the we can use a graph in order to do that meaning that I can say that f of x is equal to 1 over x squared and so then essentially the red function is my uh, position versus time function and uh, the the purple function over here is the is the derivative of the same function and since basically time cannot be negative you don't have to really worry about essentially these values over here you can you can focus on basically all the all of these values starting from zero all the way up to infinity and since uh, basically zero is the is the vertical asymptote of the function of course time cannot be equal to zero so um, so you can start at basic t, um, for example, t is equal to 1 would be, would be essentially would be this point over here. The velocity is given by this function. t is equal to 2 would be this point over here. The velocity is negative. t is equal to 3 would be this point over here. The velocity is negative. t is equal to 4 is this point over here. The velocity still happens to be a negative value. Right, because well, the the function essentially is always a decreasing um, is is essentially a decreasing function. As a result, the velocity function is always has always essentially a negative value because the rate of change over here is negative, right? So, which means that basically you could you could basically take a look at the um, you could take a look at these values now one more way that you can um, essentially one thing that that you note here is that when I when I graph the the original function for example f of x in this case if I calculate f prime of x which is the derivative of the same function um, the, the calculator essentially gives me the essentially it gives me the derivative of the function in the form of a graph right but it doesn't give me any um, algebraic equation or relationship between x and y <coughs> and so essentially this calculator does not give you a, a relationship for the for the derivative function if you have to basically if you need to find the derivative function, you could go to GeoGebra.org and take a look at the take a look at the the, the the calculator switch and basically graph your function over there, which is for example f of x is equal to for example one over x squared, right? So this is essentially your function. Now this calculator, when it calculates the, the derivative for you and also gives you a relationship for that derivative, meaning that if you calculate basically, if you calculate over here f prime of x, you can see that it tells you that the, that the relationship for the, for the derivative function is negative 2 over x, x, x squared plus 1. Um, so negative 2 over x squared plus 1 if I graph this function over here negative 2 over x squared plus 1 of course sometimes it does make mistakes actually it's supposed to be x cube right so this as you can see, it's, it's, it's written negative 2 over x cubed. So in the beginning, it was x squared plus 1. 
So then you can see that I can read the function from here, meaning that that GeoGebra actually gives me the, the the graph of the function, and then if I if I graph it over here, you can see that this is the exact same function as the derivative function that Desmos has has graphed over here. So it's exactly the exact same function, right? And then you can you can basically calculate the you can calculate essentially the derivative of the function at t is equal to 1, t is equal to 2, t is equal to 3, meaning that in this relation, if I call this, for example, if I call this g of x, g of x and g of x is equal to this, and then I can calculate, for example, do a table of values for this function, uh, and set x is equal to 1, set x is equal to 2, set x is equal to 3, and so on and so forth. And then that way essentially I know that the, that, that, that the, that the velocity is negative 2 at, at x is equal to 1. At x is equal to 2, the velocity becomes negative 0 0.25, for example. At x is equal to 3 is negative 0 0.074047 and so on and so forth. And these are essentially all in meters per second because the units over here are um, essentially meters per meters per second, right? So I'm going to write down these values over here. I'm going to say that basically that that the velocity that the velocity at t is equal to 1, at t is equal to a is negative 2 over negative 2 over basically x a cube, right? The velocity at t is equal to 1 would be equal to negative 2 meters per second. The velocity at, at t is equal to 2 is equal to is basically negative 0 0.25 meters per second and the velocity at t is equal to is equal to 3 is negative 0 0.074 uh, meters per second so this is based on the calculator right now we can calculate the same thing meaning that we can find essentially the velocity of the function the function is s is equal to 1 over t squared. I'm going to write it as f of x is equal to 1 over x squared, right? And then I will find the, 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 the derivative of this function at a, meaning I will calculate f prime of a, which is the limit of basic the f of a plus h minus f of a over h as h approaches 0. Right now, you can see that basically f of a plus h would be the same thing as one over a plus h raised to the second power, which would be the same thing as basically one over a squared plus two times a h plus h squared, and f of basically f of a would be f of a would be one over a squared, right? So this would be the same thing as the limit of f of a plus h, which is this value over here, 1 over basically a squared plus 2 times a h plus h squared minus f of a, which is 1 over a squared over h as h approaches 0, right? Now you can add these, you need to add these together meaning that you have 1 over a squared plus 2 times a h plus h squared minus 1 over a squared is the same thing as take the essentially the LCM as a squared times basically a squared plus 2 times a h plus h squared and then if you divide this by this you'll get basically a squared minus this whole thing which is a squared minus 2 times a h plus h squared this is supposed to be plus, right? And, and this is the same thing as basically a squared 
minus a squared minus 2 times a h minus h squared over a squared times basically a squared plus 2 times a h plus h squared and then you can cancel these two out now if you divide this by h if you divide this by h h goes to the goes to the denominator which means that you can write this as the limit of basically this whole thing negative 2 a h minus h squared h times basically so i'm dividing by h as well so h times a squared times a squared plus 2 times a h plus h squared and as h approaches 0 right so next what i'm going to do and you can see that all of this calculation all of this calculation the calculator is doing in a split second meaning that it's really powerful tool and these types of calculators did not exist when for example when i was going to college it was of course i went to college a little bit late i'm not that 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 young it was about uh, 15 14 15 years ago i was i was about 30 years old back at the time so back at the time there was even no youtube youtube even did not exist it did exist but it was very in a very primitive stage even google did not exist that much really um, and so well there was no calculator i mean this this type of calculator that you have that we have now over here we can see all of these very complicated graphs for this type of thing you had to buy a computer algebra system which would cost you probably over two three thousand dollars back then 15 years ago so these are valuable tools that are today are that, that you can use them for whatever you want to and well you can use them free of cost really so so now basically what i'm going to do i'm going to take an h out here right this as h times basically negative two times a minus h and so take h and h you can cancel out here as h basically approaches zero this becomes basically negative 2a over basically um and then as h goes to zero this becomes zero this becomes zero this becomes a a squared times a squared and then you can cancel these two out this becomes a so this becomes negative two over a cube right so that means that basically f prime of a is equal to negative 2 over a cube which is the value that negative 2 over a cube which is the value that we got over here right now you can now what you could do is that you can basically find now the velocity the velocity at t is equal to 1 at t is equal to 1 f prime of so this is the same thing as f prime of this is the same thing as f prime of of a essentially so at t is, or at, at x is equal to 1 let's say and now that we have called everything x and y and f of x at x is equal to 1 f prime of 1 is equal to negative 2 over 1 cube which is negative 2 that's negative 2 meters per second at x is equal to 2 then f prime of 2 would be equal to well negative 2 over uh, 2 cube is equal to 8 2 8 is equal to 1 fourth so that's negative 1 fourth meters per second which is the same thing as negative 0 0.25 meters per second which is the same thing that we got over here 
and when x is equal to 3 then f prime of 3 is the same thing as basically negative 2 over 3 cube is equal to 27 meters per second which is the same thing as uh, which is the same thing as negative 22 over 27 is the same thing as negative 0 0.0740 which is basically negative 0 0.074 which is the exact same value that we got over here so that's that's basically negative 0 0.074 meters 4 meters per per second right so that's that's another question okay so now let me Let's, let's see what is the next, this was question number 15. Number 16, let me write down the question. Okay, so the next question that we have is the displacement in meters of a particle moving a straight in a straight line is given by S is equal to T squared minus 8 times C plus 18, T measured in seconds, right? First, you want to find the average velocity over each time interval, which goes from basically 3 to, 3 to 4. These are closed intervals. 3 to 4, 3.5 to 4, 4 to 5, and 4 to 4.5, right? And then you want to find the instantaneous velocity when t is equal to 4, and then Part C is draw the graph along with the secant lines and the tangent lines. The secant lines would be essentially the, the lines that would go through essentially these points. And this, the tangent line is essentially the uh, tangent to the graph of the function at t is equal to 4, right? So what I'm going to do is that for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to write this function as basically as f of x is equal to x squared minus 8 times x plus 18, right? So this is the, this is the position function that we have. And f of x is in meters, x is in seconds. x represents time and f of x represents uh, basically the, the position of the of the of the particle right so next what i'm going to do is that i'm going to um i'm going to f to graph this function meaning that i'm going to say that this is basically f of x is equal to x squared minus eight times x plus 18 which is basically this graph over here which is essentially this graph over here, right? Next, what I'm going to do is that since I want to find the instantaneous velocity at t is equal to 4, at t is equal to 4, the output of this function is at, is at this point, which is 4, 2, which is, which is essentially this, this, the, the, essentially the bottom of the, the, the bottom of the trough of this, of this, of the, of the function. Meaning that the point is basically four comma four comma two, right? And then what I'm going to do is that I'm going to say that I'm going to draw essentially a um, I'm going to draw essentially the the um, I'm going to find essentially the the, the, the secant line since I want to basically and you can see that of course at the bottom of the trough over here the if you basically if you draw a line tangent to the to the graph of this function the the um, the slope of the line would be equal to zero because it's the bottom of the of the trough of the function and at this point since it's a minimum uh, the rate of change over here is equal to zero which means that if I write, for example, y minus uh, y1, which is 2, essentially, in this case, this point is 4, 2, is equal to m times x minus 4. And if I set the value to, 
set the value to, to essentially to zero, you can see that the line is exactly tangent to the graph of the function at this point, as you can see. If I keep zooming in, you can see that the that that, that basically that 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 essentially if you zoom in um basically into this this area of the graph that the that essentially that the slope of this line which happens to be essentially a zero is exactly the same as the slope of the graph at this point right next basically what i'm going to do is that i'm going to 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 essentially define a point a and f of a and the graph of this function right and then if i if i basically if i do a um for now we can we can forget about this for now basically what i'm going to do is that i'm going to for example um if I draw a line between essentially this point over here and this point over here, that would look like, for example, um, that would look like, for example, that the line, we could write the equation of the line as basically y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. And the, and the, and then basically um, one of the points is a comma f of a the other point is essentially four comma two right so i'm going to take x1 y1 for example as um, this point over here i'm going to take this as x1 and y1 and the slope of the line would be m would be the same thing as basically y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 right which means that basically m would be equal to basically y2 minus y1 so you can write it as 2 minus f of a over 4 minus a so then we can write we can rewrite the equation as um, this equation i can write it as y minus y1 which is equal to 2 is equal to m which is 2 minus f of a over 4 minus a times basically x minus x1 which is which is 4 right so the if i draw this the graph this graph over here this would uh, go through essentially this would go through this point and any point on the on the graph of the function and then for these points essentially what i can do is that i can i can take these points for example 3 3.5 5 and 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 4.5 to see essentially what is the what is essentially the um, the um, the slope of those those lines, and then what I'm going to do in order to make this in order to make this simple, I'm going to define some variable, for example s, and say that s is the same thing as two minus f of a over, for example, four minus a. And then rewrite this equation as y minus 2 is the same thing as s times x minus 4, for example. And write the equation that way. So that I can always see what is the value of this of the, of the slope over here. Right? So then the... Oops. So then what I'm going to do is that I'm going to rewrite, to, the, to write the equation as y minus 2. As y minus y minus 2 is equal to for example s times x minus x minus 4 x minus 4 and the value of s i'm going to say that s is the same thing as um, i'm going to say that s is the same thing as basically 2 minus f of a over basically 4 minus a right now you can see that now basically the essentially the value of s is giving me 
is giving me the, the slope of this line, right? And if I change the value of A to different values, the line essentially goes through this point, which is 4, 2, and base 60, and A, comma F of A, right? And this fraction over here gives me the, um, the, the slope of this line as I, as I change essentially the value of, as I change the value of this fraction over here, as I change the value of A over here, the value of this fraction changes. And basically the line, essentially you can see that this changes over here. Now, over here basically what we wanted to do was that we wanted to find the average velocity over these over basically this time interval that goes from three to four and if i set the value of, of a to three for example like this you can see that basically this 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 point over here is three comma three for example right this point over here is 3 comma 3 and this is this point over here is 4 comma 2. This means that at this point time essentially time is time is equal to 3 seconds at this point time is equal to 4 seconds right. At time is equal to 3 seconds the position is 3 meters at time is equal to 4 seconds the position is 2 meters right. And of course this is the position function right. And uh, if you essentially, if you calculate the slope of this, this, this secant line, that would be the average velocity between this point in time and this point in time, right? Which means that basically when, when, when essentially on this interval, which, which goes from three to four, as you can see, the slope of this line happens to be a negative one which means that the average velocity is negative one meters per second, right? If I go from 3.5 to 4, for example, if I set the value of this to 3.5, you can see that now that the slope of the line becomes negative 0.5, which means that basically um, now the, 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 the average velocity between these two points in time is negative 0.5 meters per second. And and you saw that basically that the value was negative one meter per second. Now it's become negative 0 0.5 meters per second. And what I have done is that I have, I have gotten a little bit closer to X is equal to four, right? So as I get closer to X is equal to four, the slope of the line is getting closer to zero, right? <coughs> now, if I go from four to five, if I go from 4 to 5, meaning that if I change this value to 5, the value is a positive 1, which means that basically now I'm coming essentially from the right-hand side of x is equal to 4, and the, and the slope of the line happens to be a 1, which means 1 meters, 1 meter per second, and that's the average velocity between these two points in time, right? If I go from 4 to 4.5, meaning that if I set this value to basically to 4.5, the slope of the line becomes 0 0.5, which means that it's getting again closer to, uh, it's, it's getting closer to zero essentially. And then if I keep changing this value, you see over here, if I get, if I get far away from the point of x is equal to four, the slope of this line is increasing. It's 2.5, 2.7 and so on and so forth. If I get closer and closer to the point x is equal to 4, you can see that this slope is decreasing. Until when I get to, well, exactly 4, of course it would be undefined because 4 minus 4 would be equal to 0. And so, and, and of course then the function, you can, the, the calculator will not be able to evaluate essentially this fraction. <coughs> but if I get very close, <coughs> meaning that 4.0001 you can see that the the slope is practically zero right now if i go to the other side meaning for example if i get far essentially far far away from x is equal to 4 
at this point for example 1.7 the slope is negative 2.3 if i get a little bit closer to x is equal to 4 you can see that the slope is getting closer and closer to 0 until when i get to 4 exactly it's undefined but if i if i get very close meaning 3 point for example 9999 then basically the then the slope becomes basically if i get very close like this for example then the slope becomes practically zero right so this is essentially the exact um, the exact basically um um the exact um, um process that you go through when you want to calculate basically instantaneous velocity so this is essentially this this fraction over here is average velocity which is well s is equal to basically this fraction and this fraction is average velocity because of the fact that basically this is one point on the graph of the function and then this is another point on the graph of the function so what I'm doing over here is that I'm saying that, for example, at this point, for example, uh, at, at, at x is equal to 4, the output of the function happens to be 2, for example. At this input a, which happens to be 5.3, there is some output for the function which we can call f of a. So essentially 2 minus f of a is the, is the, is the difference in, in, um, essentially is the difference in the in the output of the function and 4 minus a is the difference in the input of the function and so basically what this means is that i'm just simply calculating the slope of this line that goes through those two points which is a secant line which means that it's the the value of the average velocity between these two points right now this is the exact same thing this is the exact same thing that we do over here. So if you have a function over here, for example, call it f, and if this is x and this is y, for example, then if you call this point a, and if you call this point, for example, a plus h, so this, this output would be f of a plus h, and this output would be basically f of a. So when I want to calculate the average velocity for this function, I take essentially the I draw essentially a line between these two points this point over here and this point over here and then I calculate the slope of this line which is the rise which is the rise over the run right so the rise over run the rise over run for this function would be the same thing as basically f of a plus h minus f of a over basically a plus h minus a which would be the same thing as basically f of a plus h minus f of a over h right so this is essentially this this fraction over here this is nothing but average velocity average velocity in the inner one or on the inner wall on the inner wall that goes from a to a plus h right and you saw that basically that what we used to do was that we saw that we we said that we could we could essentially this this essentially this value this this distance h we could make it a little bit smaller meaning that this point we could we could get a little bit closer to a essentially so getting a little bit essentially getting a little bit closer to a we do it essentially using the limit meaning that we take essentially the exact same fraction over here which is f of a plus h minus f of a over h and we give it to the limit and we take the limit as h approaches zero as h approaches zero that means that basically a plus h is getting closer and closer to a essentially right which means that basically that the process that I'm going through here, meaning that changing the value of a here, getting closer and closer to 
to basically to to this point over here I'm calculating essentially um, I'm calculating average velocities as basically as the value of h is getting smaller and smaller right so you can see that as I as I get closer and closer to a the value of the the value of this of this average velocity is getting closer and closer to is getting closer and closer to zero from the other side the same thing essentially is essentially happening as I get closer and closer to x is equal to four you can see that this value is getting closer and closer to zero right and so in the in the in the limiting process you can say that 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 essentially that the that the instantaneous velocity of the of the particle at x is equal to four is zero meters per second because because of the fact that it's just simply at the at the bottom of this trough over here it's just simply at the bottom of this just this trough and at the bottom of the trough the function is not changing the rate of change is zero so basically then the, the average velocity it, the instantaneous velocity becomes zero right so um so that's that's about understanding the question now if you if you want to essentially do the algebra to to solve this problem essentially what you could do is that you could do the following you could basically you could essentially what you need to do is that you need to um so the essentially the displacement in meters of this particle moving along a straight line is given by this function s is equal to t squared minus a times c plus 18 which i've written this way over here t is measured in seconds and f of s is, is measured in meters which means that f of x is measured in meters and x is measured in seconds you want to find the average velocity over each of these time intervals for example um, for example um, uh, 3 comma 4 for example right so that means that you want to calculate f of basically a plus h minus f of a over h as and that that is basically the v of average essentially that is your average velocity right so then over here basically what you need to do is that since you want to find you want to find the average velocity as um as for example at at with respect to this point which is four for example you can set the value of a is equal to four for example right and then basically you need to um essentially f of a plus h you need to set it as basically um so this is essentially so this is essentially a and and then a plus h a plus h becomes basically um becomes a theory essentially in this case for example right now this this essentially tells us that since a is equal to 4 this is 4 plus h is equal to 3 that means that h is equal to 3 minus 4 which is equal to negative 1 right so which means that basically what you need to do is that you need to calculate f of a plus h which is f of basically a which is 4 let me write it this way so you can write it a plus h which is f of basically 4 uh, minus 1 which is equal to f of 3 right and f of 3 you can calculate it using this function as for example as for example um let's let's keep it as it is right for now and f of a would be f of basically f of 4 and then the value of h we already know what that is right 
so then we can say that basically the v of average is the same thing as is the same thing as f of a plus h which is the same thing as f of 3 minus basically f of a which is equal to f of 4 over basically over h which happens to be a negative 1 and then you can calculate these values and then substitute them in this in this formula to calculate your average velocity which means that you can say that for example f of 3 for example is equal to i don't know based on this 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 relationship is the same thing as 3 squared is equal to 9 minus 8 times 3 is equal to 24 plus 18 18 plus 9 is equal to 27 minus 24 is equal to 3 and f of 4 is the same thing as basic 4 squared is equal to 16 and uh, 8 times 4 is equal to 32 plus 18 18 plus 16 is equal to 20 uh, let's say 16 plus 18 which is the same thing as 14 1 that's 34 minus 32 is equal to 2 so this would be the same thing as for example f of 3 which is equal to 3 minus 2 over negative 1 which is the same thing as 1 over negative 1 which is equal to negative 1 and the unit would be essentially meters per second right so <coughs> so this means that this means that basically if you calculate your average velocity for the for this interval that goes from basically um, 3 to 4 3 to 4 the average velocity would be negative 1 meters per second right now you can take a look at the you can take a look at so t if you set the value of of 8 to 3 essentially over here you can see that the average velocity becomes negative 1 meters per second right now i showed you this calculation but you don't have to go through all of this calculation although you need to to actually understand how to do this calculation because sometimes the value of h becomes negative sometimes becomes positive you need to understand what a what a negative h actually represents right but then you don't really need to to go through essentially all of this all of this 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 business over here what you could do is that you want to find basically you want to find essentially simply average velocity right you want to find average velocity between essentially two points in time so let's let's, let's do it in a, in a in a simpler way okay so now in order to calculate the your average velocity based on this function so you can use also i mean if you don't want to make it that that complicated um what you can do is that um, of course you know that this is a this is essentially a a um, uh, this function is essentially a, a a position versus time function right so which means that essentially now let's let's say that for example your function is is for example something like this and and this this axis over here is position and this is time for example right now average velocity average velocity by definition is the same thing as basically the change in position change in position over the change in time right now if you want to find your average velocity on this on this interval which goes from 3 to 4 3 to 4 that means that you want to find your average velocity between essentially x is equal to 3 seconds and x is equal to 4 seconds right 
So, which means that basically the question that you that you can ask yourself is where essentially where was I at where was I essentially along the road at t is equal to or x is equal to three seconds? Where was I along the road? Meaning, in other words, what was my position? at x is equal to three seconds and you can an answer this question based on this based on this relationship in the exact same way you can you can essentially ask the same question what was my position at x is equal to four seconds right so based on this based on this this um, relationship essentially i can calculate my my position at x is equal to 3 seconds, meaning that I know that f of x is equal to x squared minus 8x minus 8x plus 18. And to, ca to calculate my position at x is equal to 3 seconds, I can calculate f of 3, which is the same thing as 9 minus 24 plus 18, which is 27 minus 24 is equal, is equal to 3 meters, right? That's my position at at x is equal to three seconds. When and my position when when x is equal to four seconds, that would be f of four, which would be the same thing as um, which would be the same thing as basically um, um, four squared is equal to sixteen minus eight times four is equal to thirty two plus eighteen which is the same thing as for example 16 plus 18 is the same thing as uh, 14 1 that's the 34 minus 32 is equal to 2 meters that means that at x is equal to 3 seconds i was at 3 meters along the road at x is equal to 4 seconds i was at 2 meters along the road right so now the change in the change in position would be the same thing as essentially three meters minus two meters right and the change in time the change in time would be basically three seconds four seconds minus three seconds which would be basically one meter and this would be essentially one second so if i take the ratio of these two average velocity would be essentially that the ratio of the change in in position over the change in time which would be one meter to essentially per one second which is the same thing as one meters per se one meter per second so this is the meaning of average velocity and then in the exact same way you can calculate all of these average velocities right and and then basically once you have essentially all of these in place once you have all of these in place you can uh, um, calculate essentially the instantaneous velocity as at t is equal to 4 which you can calculate essentially in the following way the instantaneous velocity at t is equal to 4 okay so to calculate instantaneous velocity at x is equal to four seconds so this is your position function right you know that if you differentiate your if you different if you find the derivative of your of your um, 
if you find the derivative of your position function at this point in time that essentially gives you the instantaneous velocity at the same at the exact same point in time essentially which means that basically f prime of a would be the same thing as the limit of basically f of a plus h minus f of a over h as h approaches zero right now a is equal to four that means that i want to find f prime of four essentially which is the limit of basically f of four plus h minus f of four over h as h approaches zero right <clears throat> Now, the way that I can calculate this is that, of course, I need to calculate essentially all of these based on based on my function, right? So, f of, for example, f of 4 plus h would be the same thing as basically 4 plus h raised to the second power minus 8 times 4 plus h plus 18, which would be the same thing as 16 plus 8 times h plus h squared minus... Uh, 32 minus 8 times h plus 18 which would be the same thing as um, 8 times h minus 8 times h you can cancel out so that would be h squared and 18 plus 16 is the same thing as uh, 34 34 minus 32 is the same thing as 2 so that's plus a 2 Right, so 18 plus 18 plus 16 is the same thing as 14. 34 minus 32 is equal to 2. And f of 4. And f of 4 would be the same thing as based on this would be the same thing as 16 minus 32 plus 18. That's 34 minus. That's it. That's a 2. So then you could write this as. You could write this as the limit of basically f of 4 plus h, which is h squared plus 2, um, minus f of 4, which is 2, over h, as h approaches 0. Now, these two you can cancel out. These two you can cancel out. And as h approaches 0, this becomes 0. And so, the that means that the instantaneous velocity, instantaneous velocity at at x is equal to 4 seconds is equal to is equal to 0 meters per second which is exactly which is exactly this point over here 4 comma 2 right now now let's um, let's basically let's do let's graph essentially all of these secant lines and tangent lines and and, and so on and so forth to graph the secant lines, I will do a couple of them for you. Um, so, uh, so let me. So now to graph essentially the um, to graph the secant lines. So you have you have essentially one secant line that goes from basically for three to four essentially. That you can that we can that that we can draw. And. Uh, So, um, so let's see essentially how we can we can graph this, and then we will we will see about the rest of the rest of the lines. So when we when we, we want to essentially we want to graph the graph the secant line that basically that calculates graph the secant line that. Uh, that 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 represents that represents average velocity 
average velocity on this interval, on this interval over here. That means that basically one end of this interval is x is equal to 3 and the other end of the interval is equal to, is x is equal to 4, right? So you essentially need the two ends of the, the essentially the two ends of the interval, which means that basically you need to know essentially what is the, what is this, what is essentially this point on the graph and also what is this point on the graph. In order to, to know that, basically, you need to, you need to use the, the, the equation of the function, which is basically f of x is equal to x squared minus 8x plus 18, for example. Now, when x is equal to 3, f of 3 is equal to, for example, 9 minus 24 plus 18. And that is the same thing as, basically, um, 18 plus 9 is equal to 27, 27 minus 24 is equal to 3, right? f of 4 would be the same thing as basically uh, 4 squared is equal to 16, 4 times 8 is equal to 32 plus 18, that's 34, 34 minus that's equal to 2. That means that this point over here is when x is equal to 3, y is equal to 3, and when x is equal to 4, y is equal to 2, right? So that means that basically you want to essentially draw a line between these two points, right? To draw a line between these two points, what you can do is that you can write y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1, right? Suppose that I take the m I can, I can calculate, m is equal to basically y2 minus y1, over x2 minus x1, right? So I could write m is equal to, for example, 2 minus 3 over 4 minus 3, which is the same thing as negative 1 over 1, which is equal to negative 1. So the, the slope of the line, you can calculate that way. The, uh, the equation of the line becomes y minus, take this point as x1, y1, y minus 3 is the same thing as negative 1 times x minus 3, which means that y minus 3 is equal to negative x plus 3, which means that y is equal to negative x plus 6, right? So, now if you graph this line over here, you will see that basically I will get rid of all of these so that we can work with the so this is the point four comma two which is the bottom of the trough on the function and this is the point three comma three which is this point over here and if I graph the line y is equal to negative x plus six you can see that the line goes through exactly the exact the, those exact same points and that is basically the average velocity between x is equal to 3 seconds and x is equal to 4 seconds the slope of this line is the average velocity uh, between those two points in time right and then in the exact same way you can basically find the average velocity you can you can find basically the uh, you can essentially draw the graph of this, the uh, the graph of this, the, the line going through these two points or these two points or these two points. And the tangent line would be the line going through this point, which since you know that the slope over here is equal to zero, you can write y is equal to y minus y1. So over here basically the the y coordinate is equal to 2, so y minus 2 is equal to 0, which is the slope of the line, times x minus 4, right? Which is the, and this is the, essentially the, ta the tangent line, essentially at this point, which is the, av the instantaneous velocity at x is equal to 4 seconds, right? Okay. So this was question number, this was question number 16.
In the next video, we will talk about question number 17. Thank you.